Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're gonna go over edge protection. Uh, this thing's all over the aircraft. The one in particular that we're gonna look at today is the main drive shaft fairings on the EC-135. Uh, because they fall off a lot, because there's oil that always drips out of the input seal and uh, it's always soaked in oil. And I've seen it too many times where these things are not put on correctly. They're put on with, uh, looks like silicone whacker, or they're glued on with like 1300L, something like that, but that's not the right way to do it. So we're gonna go over that real quick today. Obviously this fairing's been removed, it's on the table, but if you see the edge protection peeling off like that, like this one is, it's kind of an issue, right? Basically, I'm gonna go over this and make it super simple at the very beginning so everybody knows. Here's the part number, MBBN3406-7. How do you attach this edge protection? It says right here, installed using a hot air blower. All right, but we're gonna go through all of this and break it down, go down the rabbit hole. So you might search all over for this piece. Uh, it's not easy to find, but it is in firewall, longitudinal, removable, 7132-0101A. Depending on your serial number, most of the serial numbers are in this one. So if we zoom in a little bit, that's the IPC right there. And if we look at J, that's where we want to zoom into. So we click on page two of the IPC, it brings up J. And sure enough, there's the part we need. What item is it? Item number 240. Yep, that's the one, edge protection. There's your part number, MBBN3406-7. So I just made it real easy for you guys. All right, thanks for watching. See you guys next time, just kidding. If you wanted to bail out right now, that's cool. You have all the information you need, but I'm just gonna go through it some more and explain more of it. If you needed to find this and you knew what the part number was, you go to the Airbus website, EC-135, you click on the help lens on the top right, and it brings you to this page, and then you just type in your part number for the search, right there. After the search, it brings you to this page. 226 results, that's a ton. Take you forever to scroll through it, especially it's all IPC stuff. Click the filter on the top right, it brings you to this page, click manual. It shows you all the manuals that are in this search that it pulled up, AMM, IPC, MTC. If you look at the IPC, there's 224 items. If you unclick that, or you just click AMM and MTC, which there's only one of each, that will give you the results on the left. We're just gonna go through those two things real fast and try to figure it out. All right, top one, removal and installation of air distribution, cockpit ventilation system. This is the only place in the AMM that it actually talks about this edge protection. What's it say? Install ed edge protection two and six as follows. If necessary, cut edge protection to the length as shown in figure one. Okay, install the edge protection according to the AMM 20 whatever. So we're gonna go there, click the link. Brings you up to that one, which is standard practices. AMM 20-80-002-1 standard practices, chafing protection. Scroll all the way down or halfway down to edge protection. Pretty much the only thing that we need to know from this is shrink on edge protection. Number five is installed using a hot air blower. Okay, so we're getting closer to actually how you do this job and if it's the right part. Do we even know that the part number that we got is shrink on edge protection? We don't know that yet. We have no idea. We just think it, think it is. Well, I know it is because I've been doing this for a while, but after looking around at some of these machines, no, no one else does. Very few guys know. And I only knew this because about a decade ago, that one of the guys I worked with said, hey man, that's heat shrinkable. Heat it up real hot and it melts the glue and it, and it, and it will attach to the fairing. I'm like, oh man, thanks for that. So I'm just trying to spread that wealth of knowledge. So we're kind of at a roadblock right here. So we're gonna go back to our search. Uh, the one on the bottom, list of consumable materials, miscellaneous products of the helicopter. Click that link. So this is the chart on the consumable material list. It's way at the bottom of like a 500 page document, okay? But it's highlighted because we clicked, that's what our search. We searched MBBN 3406 with no dash numbers. And that's what got us here. If you do the seven, it'll get you there. I'll show you that in a second. But anyway, that's consumable number. That's the material. Protective edge, of course that's the part number, and that's the product, RayRim-N8. That's what came up, but if we go search for a correct part number, the CM number, which is CM7358, and that's the right part number, which is a dash seven, and this is RayRim-NR7-0, so what the heck is RayRim? I don't know, go to your favorite search engine and type in protective edge, RayRim, 
N7 or N8. I typed in N8. Second thing that popped up uh, was a PDF. That's straight from Raychem. Those are the people who make Rayrim. <laughs> Tells you everything you need to know about this. It's only two pages. Go to the second page, and it gives us a whole bunch of information on how to install it. Wow, we're actually making progress now. So we're gonna. I'm gonna read that to you real quick. All right, special installation instructions. Awesome. On the application of heat above 80 degrees Celsius, the adhesive will melt and flow. On the application of heat above 120 degrees Celsius, which is hot as hell, the profile will change from a V to a U section and grip the substrate profile. All right, that's awesome. How do we do that? The following procedure is recommended for installation. One, prior to installation, clean the panels. All right. Uh, an installation temperature of 150 degrees to 200 degrees Celsius is preferred. Damn, that's hot. The end of the strip should be heated until the adhesive is tacky and then applied to the plate with gloved hand. Blah, blah, blah. Got it. Yeah, dude, wear gloves, right? The edges can be heated and pressed into place using a gloved hand or suitable flat surface. Apply gentle pressure to ensure proper adhesion. Any excess of adhesive can be cleaned with MEK. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the point is, dude, heat it up till it gets super hot while it's on there and squeeze it so that some of the glue comes out and you can see the whole part of the edging is sealed or is glued. Not just the end or not just the top, right? But it's going to be hot like crap, so you got to hang on to it with some legit gloves or a couple pairs of gloves, right? Uh, it also says, number five, note that the hot melt adhesive will be reactivated by a temperature in excess of 80 degrees Celsius, this allowing the repair after uh, localized damage of the strip. Okay, so if it's covered with oil and it's starting to flake off, you can clean it with some, I don't know, alcohol or contact cleaner or something to get the oil off of it. And then uh, you can heat it up again and squeeze it on. So that's something you could do on your daily, possibly. Anyway, that's it. Thanks, Raycam. So you take a look at your edge protection. Yeah, dude, that's got glue inside of it. See how it's shiny? That's the right stuff. I mean, you ordered the right part, but if you didn't know that you had to heat it up and you just try to throw glue on it, then it's not going to work out. It'll last for a little bit, but it won't last for very long, especially where it is. Anyway, clean it, put it on, get some good squeeze out, heat it up real good. Perfect. At the end, cut the edges off. So when you put it together, the overlap isn't hitting the edge protection, like right there. So you want to do, you want to heat the first corner, first edge, like maybe like an inch or two, squeeze it on there until it, um, till it holds it on there and then cools. And then you could do the rest of it. So you do it like three or four different sections. But at the end, if it looks like this and there's squeeze out all around, then you're good. It'll last for a while because oil is going to be running down that tube drop after drop, not running, like it's not flowing, right? But you get some drips and that should hold up against it compared to if it wasn't sealed all the way around. But I thank you guys for tuning in. And the main reason I brought this to you guys is because I see this thing screwed up all the time and I see it installed incorrectly. It's not installed with Wacker. It's not installed with 1300L or something else like that. It's installed with a heat gun. All right, that's it for the video. Hope you guys found some value in it and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.